Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale with Off the Beaded Path, and this is your Must Know Monday for Monday, February the 15th. I hope you had a wonderful Valentine's Day, but now the Valentine's Day is over, it's ready to do a new project and ready to kind of full steam ahead to the next part of life. Um, today, the necklace that I want to show you. It will teach you how to take chain and eye pins, connect those together to make a really pretty necklace. Okay, a lot of people uh, email me with questions about, you know, how do you connect chain to, you know, make a necklace. So th I hope this will show you. Um, this is a necklace that I made several years ago, and it's been in my jewelry box. And every time I pull it out, people comment on it, and they just really like the necklace. So I figured I'd show you guys how to make it. The first thing you're going to need is about six and a half foot of chain. Now, the chain that I'm using today is a silver plated, and this is a 2.2 millimeter cable chain. So, as you can see, it's a very small chain that I'm using. You're going to need about six and a half foot of that. You're going to need nine diamond components. And when I say a diamond component, it is this little component right here. You can call it a square, diamond, whatever you want. Um, we sell these on our website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. <clears throat> You're going to need 22 4 millimeter 20 gauge jump rings, two 6 millimeter jump rings, and I'm going to be using the twisted jump rings. You're going to need a lobster claw, 10 eye pins, and eye pins are the pins that are straight pins, and they have a little loop on the end so that it makes it look like the letter I when you hold it up this way. You're going to need 10 4 millimeter daisy spacers, 10 6 millimeter round crystals. I'm using fuchsia and 10 6 millimeter round of another color and I'll be using rose. I'm going to start out my project and I've, I've done this, I've made this twice already today so I'm hoping I've got the counts right. You're going to use your chain and cut 14 pieces of chain that are three and a half inches, five pieces of chain that are three and three quarter inches, and then two pieces of chain that are one and a half inches. And I find it best just to go ahead and cut all your chain beforehand, get it over with, and done. Also, I also found it helpful. I used my beading awl, my tulip beading awl, and I picked up the very end link of chain, and then I would put the chain that was on my spool on there and kind of just hold it up and be able to cut it so that you get the same length of chain. It's very important for this necklace that you try and get your lengths as close as possible to each other. So that way the, the measurements will be what you need them to be. So go ahead and get your chain cut and then we'll get started. Once you have all your pieces of chain cut, then you're ready to work on your eye pins. And what I'm going to do with the eye pin is I'm going to thread on one six millimeter fuchsia, one four millimeter daisy spacer, and one four millimeter um, rose round. The way that the loop is here, I'm going to make another loop on this end that's exactly the same. So I'm going to hold my beads here, and I'm going to bend this wire straight out at a 90 degree angle from where the bead is. Then, I'm going to take my cutters, trim the wire, so I'm going to leave about a quarter inch, quarter to half inch, and then I'm going to use the round nose pliers to bend the wire back towards itself to make my loop so that you have a loop on each end. You want to do 10 eye pins exactly like Once this Once you one. have all of your little head pins done, then you're ready to actually start the necklace. I suggest that you have a nice long flat workspace to work on this. I'm going to be using a piece of my chain that is three and a half inches long. I'm going to open a four millimeter jump ring. And remember, we've talked about this in other Must Know Monday videos, but when you work with the jump ring, 
you grab both sides of the jump ring and you twist the jump ring open. We want to attach the very end loop of the chain and then close the jump ring. And we close it by grabbing hold of both sides and twisting it back together. We're gonna open another jump ring. Grab a hold, twist it open. And if you look at your diamond component, they have a hole in each of the four corners. So we're just gonna attach the jump ring to one of those holes in the four corners. Then grab a hold, whoop, not yet. Before I close it, I'm gonna attach it to the other end of the chain. So on one end I have a jump ring, on the other end I'm attaching the diamond link with the jump ring. And I'm gonna close that jump ring. Open a jump ring. Twist a jump ring. Attach it to the other opposite point of the little diamond component. And then I'm gonna take a piece of the three and a half inch chain. I'm going to attach the end link to the jump ring. And then twist the chain to close the ring. And then we will open a jump ring So we twist it, connect it to the very end link of chain here, and then before I close it, I'm going to get one of my diamond components, thread it on, close the jump ring, so that now I have two diamond components. And then I'm just going to continue adding the chain and the components until I have all the components attached to the chain. So there will be there will be nine components beginning and ending Once with chain. Once you have all of your pieces connected, you are going to put a jump ring on the very end link of chain so that when you put your two ends together, you'll have a jump ring on each end of your chain component necklace. Now this one in itself would be pretty just to wear, but we're gonna make a second strand that goes with it. So I've taken a one and a half inch piece of chain and put a jump ring onto one end of that piece. Then you open up the little loop here where you're on your little crystal head pin attach the chain and close it. Then you're ready to start connecting. Now they're basically with this necklace what's going to happen is the links, the two jump rings are going to be connected together here at the end and then your crystal links are going to be in between right in the middle between your dime, each little diamond component. And the thing is you want these very close to the center. With these little pieces here, they are actually smaller, just a little bit smaller than your diamond component. So what happens is if you do the same measurements of chain all the way down, it's not going to work. So you have to change up your measurements a little bit. So this first one, this first piece of chain is one and a half inches. The next connection piece is three and a half. The next connection piece is three and a half. Then it goes to three and three quarters. Three and three quarters. Three and a half. Three and a half. Three and three quarters. Three and three quarters three and three quarters, 
and then finally one and a half inches with a jump ring on the other end. So I'm going to work backwards here again and tell you these, these one more time. Now this is working backwards, okay? So I've got one and a half, three and three quarter, three and three quarter, three and three quarter, three and a half, three and a half, three and three quarter, three and three quarter, three and a half, three and a half, and one and a half. So that when you get done, both ends of your chain have the little jump rings on them. Now you're ready to connect both of the necklaces together. You want to use one of your six millimeter jump rings and we're gonna attach a six millimeter jump ring to these two jump rings right So we'll right take here. the six millimeter twisted jump ring, open the jump ring, connect the two little four millimeter jump rings, one on each length of your completed chains. Before I close it, I'm gonna go ahead and thread on my lobster claw. And then close it, Oop. make sure you get it closed. And then open your second jump ring. There we go. Twist it open. Attach your each little end link of chain on the other ends of your finished pieces and then close it so that way and always check to make sure that your lobster claw will fit into your little jump ring that you add. So when you get done with the connections you're ready to wear your necklace and as you can see it's a very very pretty necklace Super simple. To me, the hardest thing and the most little, I guess, monotonous thing is having to cut all of your chain um, at one time. But I promise you, cut your chain at one time and then you'll feel like the project will go much, much faster. So we got the kits um, on our website to make this exact necklace. You can find it at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. The kits are $16 and include everything you need to make the necklace. We also have all the little components that you need on our website. Again, offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. And since I've not done a giveaway in a while, let's make this a giveaway video. So what I want you to do is I want you to leave me a comment below here on the video telling me the worst present you've ever gotten, whether it be a Christmas present, a birthday present, Valentine's Day gift, whatever. I want to know the worst gift that you feel you've ever gotten. I'm going to randomly draw a name out of those people who comment and then I'm going to send you this necklace that I just completed. So I hope you guys have a great day and I hope you learned how to incorporate chain into some of your jewelry designs. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.